All right, what's up everybody? Dave Savage coming to you live. I am on the East Coast today working out of Florida and I am interviewing Ryan. And uh, this is the second time I've interviewed Ryan. Uh, the first time uh, it was called How to Be a Mortgage Ninja or maybe it was just like Be a Mortgage Ninja with Ryan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I think that that's how you brand yourself, right? I mean, that is how, you know, you put that on your social media, on your website. Yep, 100%. And that embodies the way I run my entire business. Good. Well, I, I'm looking forward to kind of doing a 2.0 in centering this around how you're, 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 how you're being a mortgage engine in this market. And it's a purchase market. So let's talk about how are you helping realtors sell homes? And also, it's a, from what I hear, there's a lot of, um, Rate shopping out there, a lot of, yeah. are you seeing an increased amount of rate shopping in your market? Yep, a lot more, just like like double. I mean, like how much more? Oh, probably, probably triple, quadruple. So many lenders sell just on that. So we gotta be better at those conversations than ever. Okay, well, maybe we'll get some scripting out of that. Uh, so how to win with rate shoppers. So Ryan, introduce yourself to the community because while I interviewed you before, there's folks that didn't hear you. There's new okay. loan officers coming in every month. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your practice. Yeah, okay. Hey everybody, my name is Ryan Erickson. Uh, I'm based in Las Vegas. I've had my mortgage license for uh, almost seven years now. About three years ago, I started my own team, started our team before that, finally went out, started my own team about three years ago, and have been just loving it, working, growing my business like crazy the past three years, but I've gained a lot of experience really fast from myself and people around me. Uh, I approach my business very different than a lot of people do traditionally, which is where the, the Mortgage Ninja branding comes from. I approach how I run my business, how I work with agents very, very differently. We'll talk about some of that today. And what, you know, three years as a team leader, um, what kind of production are you doing? Uh, last year, we passed uh, 52. 52 million. Nice. How many families, sir? It's 149. Congratulations. So. Uh, That's right. getting, getting over a hundred families served in a year is a milestone. So congrats on that. And folks listen in, uh, the most important metric of all is he is a mortgage coach, black belt. He's done over 600 total cost analysis. Uh, what percentage of your families are you giving a TCA, a total cost analysis versus a fee worksheet? Every single one of them. That's just okay. part of my process. Every one of them gets so, one now. So you are a mortgage ninja. You know, not. I, I do see a lot of people putting some version of that. I'm a mortgage advisor, but not necessarily delivering the advice. So congrats on being true blue and delivering that. So so let's transition into in today's market. Anyone listening sure. to this, it is February of 2022. Uh, rates have gone up in every market, at least a percent. Uh, inventory is tight. If you could speak to that real quick, how much have rates gone up since the beginning of the year for you? What's a guess? Uh, I tell agents anywhere from half percent to a whole percent, depending on the loan type we're doing. Enough okay, that people so, feel it. Okay. And then, and then um, how is inventory and, you know, bidding wars and how difficult is it to get an offer accepted in this market? No, oh, it's, it's bad. If you're buying under conforming loan limits, competition's coming, be ready for it, be patient. A lot of that just comes down to the expectations we set with people and teaching them how to be patient and why there's 10, 20 offers on almost everything here still especially if you're wow. around that median purchase price range, like you're, you're competing. Well, I, I know also you mentioned you recently started coaching new loan officers. So I yeah. do want to make sure before we're done, I want to get some of your advice uh, on, you know, what should new loan officers do to fast track their success? So, you, you know, okay. while you're not a new loan officer anymore, you're, you're close enough to being a new loan officer. It's probably, you're probably really good at teaching and training new loan officers. Uh, yeah, definitely. So, I'm definitely still building my own business and learning. Cool. So, so tell us what are the the tactics and strategies that you're using most in this market uh, as a mortgage coach, mortgage venture. Uh, so there's two sides of it that I really focus on a lot. One is on the agent side first. It's just being a actual business partner, being a good partner to our agents, stopping being just a referring partner and just checking in with them, saying hi, just giving flyers of things a lot of us have done and been okay with for a long time and transitioning into being an actual business partner for them and getting to know them, their business, what their objectives are, talking to them every week like you would a business partner, figuring out what they need in their business, where they're missing. Uh, and for me, that simply just comes down to just calling them and talking about how their week's gone and what they have going on this week. And then from that, 
I start coming up with ideas for how I can help, whether that's an area I think they're missing or giving them a new tool like a mortgage coach TCA that they can market with or getting them on HomeBot, things to help them increase their touches and keep it automated. Just giving them things that help them either save time, save stress, convert on a higher level, being an actual partner to them as if we're in business together and our success depends on each other because it really does now more than ever. Yeah, no doubt. And when we push this into the YouTube channel, we might even use that as the headline. You know, in this call right now, we talked about investor TCA, cost awaiting and mentoring new loan officers. But I, I think just it's important to get back to the basics and what, how can you be a great partner to an agent in February of 2022? So so tell us how you're doing that. Like, what are some tactics and strategies to do that? Uh, the, the first thing I did was just make a list of things I have to offer an agent that helps them in some way. So I'll list tools they're getting by working with me, like the, the TCAs, uh, HomeBot, a few other systems I have that I get to plug them into that I pay for that are going to help them right out the gate, list out those kinds of things. I'll list out things that are unique to Guild that I work for. And then more importantly, I list out what I do that's different. So for me, I separate my business into three areas, a lead pipeline, which is lead to application, a sales pipeline, which is application to pre-approval, and then a loan pipeline, which is my active loans. And I have a playbook for each. And that playbook says lead playbook, pre-approval playbook, uh, active loan playbook. It just says loan playbook. And I give that to them so they can see exactly what my process is like, and I never miss it. So they know exactly what to expect every step of the way working with me helps them be less stressed, save some time because they don't have to follow up on things, helps them with conversations with their client because they can tell their client exactly what to expect working with the lender referral that they're giving them and why and why they trust them. And they have this simple playbook in front of them. They can just reference as much as they need to. And it helps them go do their job and not have to babysit us doing ours. We love it. So so anyone listening to this, I mean, if you're a new loan officer, I think what he just said is particularly important, but even experienced loan officers, it's a great time to go through. I like the way you categorize it. What are the platforms that you have that are going to help you um, add more value? And he mentioned Mortgage Coach. You mentioned HomeBot. Uh, we're also big fans here at Mortgage Coach with Sales Boomerang. You know, we're, we're mm -hmm. beyond strategic partners with Sales Boomerang now. Uh, but what are those platforms that you have? And then what is unique to your mortgage company that you work for? And, and then I like what you said, and then what's unique to you as a loan officer and the services that you provide. And I like the way you call them playbooks. You and I have that in common. I, I, uh, yeah. I think I call everything playbooks. If you go and read um, my articles on LinkedIn, there's the lead conversion playbook. There's the new loan officer playbook. Uh, if, if you're watching this live, uh, put your questions in, in um, comments in Facebook and Ryan and I will get to them. If I see a question pop up while I'm interviewing you, I'll actually bring it into the conversation here. And if you're okay. watching this on YouTube, anyone watching the recording, put your questions because Ryan and I will still get those answered for you. Uh, so, so Ryan, let's start with a, a strategy. You know, like it sounds like uh, how you're using Mortgage Coach is one of those platforms. So one, how yeah. do you describe that to a realtor? When do you describe that to a realtor? And how are you using it in today's market? Uh, so how I describe it to agents is just a tool I use to put my advice and experience into a really simple way that I can show people. That's the simplest way I describe it. And it doesn't matter if it's investor, first time home buyer, down payment assistance. It just helps me put all my experience and the good advice I give into an easily digestible visual platform that I can give to them, I can give to their clients. Even when I send them to clients, the agent's on there. So the agents are getting to learn also by seeing the advice that I'm using the TCA to give our clients. So I just tell them that simply. Um, and then for clients, I don't care what kind of loan I'm doing for them. They're getting a TCA so I can help them understand that the decisions they're making are the decision they should be making and seeing different variations of that. So I just tell them I'm gonna help them look at this analysis of our game plan we just put together. And then maybe a couple other ways that we could do this and show you over two years, three years, five years, depending on their plans what that's going to look like. So they're really understanding how this fits into their financial life because people don't look at houses that way and they should, and they don't realize how big of an impact this can have on their finances long-term if they do it right. There's not just one way to do it. And I use the TCAs to show them that like, you can do it this way, you can do it this way. This is a good idea for this reason, for this other person. 
doing it this way might be a good idea, but it's not for you. And this is why. So we use that to visually show them so they can grasp it. Cause I can't tell you how many times I've given people advice and had to say the same thing over and over and over. And it still just did not hit home. Like I wanted it to started showing TCAs and one, two times max. And I can keep going in and adjusting it as our game plan changes. It's been a game changer for helping me deliver the advice I give. So anyone that heard that and you're not giving families TCA game changer to help what you're trying to explain for it to connect and, and to wow them. So also I, I liked your scripting on how you position yourself with agents. I, uh, I would recommend anyone listening to this if you do not have some good phrasing, you know, some good scripting around that to write what you heard down, listen to the recording again and, and upgrade what you're saying to agents. Um, I, I did an interview, um, I guess today's Wednesday, so it was Tuesday, and it was on yesterday's mastermind. It's in the channel. It was called New Loan Officer Sales Training. And Drake uh, did some scripting around how he positions mortgage coach with the consumer. And I, I can't say exactly what he said, but it was something to the effect that most people are just concerned about interest rate and most loan officers are just selling you interest rates. My goal is to help you achieve financial freedom faster. So I'm not, I'm looking for the right mortgage strategy to help you. If it's become debt free faster, great. If it's to help you get to a point where, you know, you're financially free faster, I'm, I'm all about financial freedom faster. So with that said, how do you position a total cost analysis with a consumer, you know, with a home buyer or, you know, if you're refinancing, how, what's, what's that sound like? Uh, so where that all starts from is my very first consultation call I do with anybody. I have a list of questions I go through, but one of the main questions I'm going over with them is what their game plan is for that house and how long they think they'll have it. And then from there, that's how I build out everything in the TCA. So the very first thing I do is I ask them, or buying this house, how long do you think you'll have it for? Or how long do you think you'll for sure have this house? Two, three, five years. And then I start with that time frame, And then based on that, I start to explain to them how their interest rate and their down payment can affect it. And then we start putting the options that are relevant to them in there, but it all starts with me helping them understand how long they're gonna have this. So I can educate them on what their finances are going to look like based on that amount of time and how you can improve it in the short term and the long term. It's one thing I think people don't realize when they're buying a house, especially the first time, is how much you can change how you're structuring your loan to make it better short-term, long-term or hurt yourself short-term, long-term. I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I was talking to a client of mine who's only going to be in the house for two years, no matter what, because they have a job contract and then they're moving away. So I explained to them the short-term, long-term repercussions of the loan that they came to me wanting to get. They wanted to just do a 10% down conventional. We started talking about rate, started talking about some of the money they were putting into it. And they plan on just selling it. So I used mortgage coach to show them what the short-term costs look like long-term and for them, the thing that mattered to them the most was keeping as much money in their pocket as possible because after two years, the next house they're buying is going to be their dream house that they're going to be in for five, 10 years, as long as they possibly can. So we wanted to keep the money out of their pocket as low as possible. So we actually ended up having them take a higher rate to shorten the amount of, or the, the amount of money out of their pocket now so they can keep it in their pocket, keep it in their retirement account it's in now and put that towards another house in two years. And if I was just selling rate, that conversation never would have happened. And now the end result, when they sell that house in two years, when they buy that next house, is going to be better and going to allow them to do even more of what they want to do two years from now because of that conversation, instead of us talking about just rate and the 10% down idea they had. Yeah. So that's also the case study that I went through with Drake. And I'm going to put a link down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link. And for those of you in Facebook, I'll put it in comments. But in this particular case, uh, it was a consumer that came to him, had already applied with their bank, and he actually had gotten a inquiry alert from Sales Boomerang. So it's like, oh, one of my past clients is shopping. And so he went after, he, he called them, and that lender was just um, providing them with a loan, you know, rate and term refi. And he was like, well, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals? Uh, what ended up happening, it was, a, it was a doctor that had some debt that also had recently bought a, more, a, a doctor's practice for like $100,000. And he ended up saying, hey, let's do a debt consolidation loan. Let's pay off some of that debt. He also um, referred that person to a financial planner. 
And then he was able to show them that, hey, if you just, you know, re-engineered your debt and you kept making the exact same payment and you did it for 30 years, they would have had an extra $4 million in net worth. So, I mean, it was, it was life-changing. You know, now this was a $1.2 million house. So it was a, yeah. you know, it was, it was, a, it was a, you know, definitely a jumbo loan, but you know, that that's like a life-changing difference. And you know what else guys, I guarantee he didn't have to like, you know, compete on a rate with the big bank because the big bank was selling rate and cost. They were selling a mortgage transaction and he was showing that family on how to achieve financial freedom faster. And then I like the edit you just made. Sometimes it's not financial freedom faster. It's that next goal. Like, you know, you want to get them into the house. So that's the final mile. But then you want to get them to the second mile, which in this case, the second mile wasn't financial freedom. The second mile was that dream home. So great, great yeah. leadership, brother. So I know you've got a couple TCA strategies to show. And yeah. audience, just know when we prep for this, I said, Drake, you know, I want to interview you because you're a great, you know, not new loan officer, but you're at that point where you killed it and now you're mentoring new loan officers. So you're a great success story as a new mentor to new loan officers. What are the TCAs that you'd like to show the audience right now? And so he picked them based off of that ask. Um, with that said, why don't you uh, tell us what you're gonna show us and give us the story okay. around it. Uh, so the two I'm gonna show are two that are very, very relevant to now. As a new loan officer, the hardest thing is just trying to figure out what you can say that's valuable to agents. Like even agents you already work with, it's hard to figure out how to be valuable when you're new. So what I did is I figured out two TCAs that are very, very relevant to now. The very first one is as an investor paying cash for a house versus taking that cash and buying multiple properties and leveraging financing instead. That came from me watching uh, just a market report that I watch every day and hearing the percentage of cash buyers, how much that's increased over the past year. So I decided, okay, how do we go figure out how to not just help ourselves get more business by being valuable to these people. How do we help our agents to give good advice to these cash buyers that they're having a larger influx of? So I created this TCA showing somebody taking $300,000 paying cash for a house, 300,000 versus taking that $300,000 and spreading it out over three properties with 30% down instead and figured out what their net worth would look like after three years, five years, and 10 years. So I'll go ahead and pull that one up first. It was, Boom, it was so, mind blown. It was mind blown to me when I looked at it. <laughs> so, so here's another one. You know, I've recently been doing some interviews and last Friday, I talked about how to get business from CPAs and financial planners. And one thing financial planners don't like is when family comes to them and says, I want to take all my money out of being managed with you. And I want to buy a house free and clear cash. Uh, and sometimes it can be millions of dollars. So mm -hmm. being able to do a cash versus mortgage total cost analysis is a home run for financial planners. So first of all, I guarantee you what he's going to show us, financial planners are going to like. Now the financial planner might say, well, why don't you buy two homes and leave the rest with me? And I can also tell you guys, yeah. realtors are going to love this because would a realtor like it? If you said, hey, let me show you how to turn your cash <laughs> buyers into, they're going to buy that home and a second home, or they're going to buy that home and an investment property. Uh, maybe they don't buy all three houses like the TCA is going to show us, but anytime you can make a, um, a client, if it's financial planner, a better investor with you, or if it's a realtor, I can make them a more valuable customer to you. Uh, people like that kind of thing. So, so show it to us. I'll tell you when I see it. And remember guys, if you have questions, put them down below. Um, Ryan, are you um, going to be able to share the link to this TCA after the call? Yeah, I know people yeah, are going to want, I know people are going to want this. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. All right, let's go. All right. So what I did here is this is this came from an actual real client of mine. Uh, this client of mine, when I met her four years ago, had one property, her primary residence. And uh, as of today, she has 11 and we're in the process of buying two more. And this all came from this same mentality, same mindset, mindset shift. So what I did in this TCA is I put four different options in here. The first one is if they were to just pay $300,000 cash, that's it for this house what their total cash to close is gonna look like, estimating their closing costs for them, what their net worth is gonna look like. And then the other three options I added in here, if I took that same amount of money, 300,000, and I spread it out, put 30% down on three properties that were the same price, except for buying three now instead of one. 
And what I did is I showed them over three years, five years, and 10 years, how much higher their net worth is going to be by doing this. So how I have it structured currently is after five years. So if you look down here at the net worth after five years, if you bought the cash, this is assuming 4% appreciation, very conservative for where we're at now. But if our appreciation annually was only 4%, after five years, that cash purchase would be 466,000. If you took that and spread it out over three and you put 30% down instead, after five years, our net worth is going to be 79% higher. 79% higher after five years by using the exact same amount of money, but buying three properties with 30% down instead. Here, I'll show you, uh, show you a little snapshot right. of the notes I took. So yeah, you yeah, guys yeah, uh, you take a screenshot yeah. of that. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say you, um, you, know, you did some math outside yeah. of... Uh, the TCA, but you use the TCA to do that. And then, by yep. the way, guys, while we're doing this, I just want to call out the fact that he's using that notes feature. So if you are a mortgage coach and you have access to the advice engine, uh, you know, here's a great use of that. Uh, also, just a reminder, guys, just right above that, that's how you add a video to a TCA. And to the right of that, in the upper right-hand corner, it's preview and highlight. Um, by the way, how often do you use the preview and highlight feature? You know, when you use a mortgage coach to watch. Oh, for it. Every time I'm on the phone, being able to highlight something while somebody's looking at it immediately takes their attention right to where I'm talking about. It makes conversations go so quick and so, so smooth when I can highlight exactly what I'm talking about for them. Cool. Cool. Well, I, I love it. If there's questions down below, let me know. Again, this is an advanced idea. This is, you know, if you're brand new to mortgage coach, this isn't where you start. Uh, I would start with like a purchase options PCA, like, like, and, and the options I would do is either interest rate options because it is a rising interest rate market. You, you want a consumer to look at you not as one program, but, you know, show a, a really low rate with a lot of points and then show a higher rate with no points. Uh, so when they look at you, they're shopping on yours or do a down payment options or do purchase price options. Uh, by the way, yeah. I assume you do those. Which 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 ones do you do the most in this market? Um, what's the most common uh, options purchase DCA? Uh, so I I actually do them around rates, no matter what kind of market we're in. And I always do two different ones. One that's a zero point cost, one point cost, and two point cost, just so they can see the relationship between upfront costs versus long term costs. And depending on their game plan, sometimes it's a good idea to spend more money upfront. Sometimes it's not. And then another one I show them is the effect of different rates on their net worth. So we'll talk about where their money's going, whether it's going towards down payment or going towards getting a lower rate. Oh, by the rate. way, you, you can stop sharing this now since we're, oh. I'm getting a strategic there we go. perspective. I want to see all of you. So yeah, okay, keep going there. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. Uh, so just those two. I always do one that shows uh, zero point cost, one point cost, two point cost. And then I explain that. And then I'll do some variation of same loan basically with different rates. And I use that to educate them around rates, what's happening in the market, what happens if they wait and their rate goes up in two weeks, what happens if they refinance later on, this is what it could look like. That conversation is different depending on the client and their game plan, but it always has just exact same scenario with a different rate. And I just educate on rates and how rates work, how the markets affect it around that TCA. But I give them something visually so they can grasp what I'm telling them a little bit, a little bit better. So like do now, you, how rates are. Do you mind uh, sending me just a example of one of those so that yeah. we can put that in the show notes? Uh, yeah. I think it would be a nice value to see how your, your most common options PCA. And uh, I'm doing an interview in a couple hours with a loan officer. Uh, I had actually interviewed her for a mortgage collaborative event. So there was a big, thousand person mortgage collaborative webinar last week and um her name's gracie and i had not seen this is the first time it she calls it her she calls it the all in one pre-approval experience so the all in one pre-approval experience and option one is what the consumer applied for so she's like you know i get a lot of referrals through my you know my digital mortgage and this is what they applied for. Option one is what they, you know, requested. Option two is always the maximum of what they are qualified for. So it's like, you know, boom. And then she said in, in my market, she's outside of Dallas, Texas. She said, you know, appraisal gap is a concern for everyone. 
So yeah. I always kind of option two is starting to have that appraisal gap conversation that, hey, if you buy at the high end of your market and the appraisal doesn't come in. So that's option three. And then option four is a cost of waiting. So she's using some data to say that, hey, if rates keep going like they're going and values keep going like they're doing, option four is a cost of waiting. And I had never heard like, you know, it's almost like three strategies in one TCA. I, I'm yeah. looking forward to interviewing her, but what are your first impressions of that? Does that sound interesting to you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially having it all condensed into just one TCA. Like that's an amazing way to show it. Yeah, well, I actually, um, you know, when I prepped with her, I already have it. So I'm actually, oh, in, nice. in this call, I'm going to put a link down below to it. And Ryan, after the call, I would awesome. love it if you checked it out and, uh, yeah. you know, let me know what you thought of it. Let me know if it sounds like something you would do. So yeah, what, what's, the, what's, what's the other total cost analysis you want to talk about right now? Uh, the other one is uh, cost of waiting. So it's kind of related to that one. Yeah, let's see how you do it. So basically what I do with this one is I take uh, I take the rent versus own and I just add one more layer to that. So I instead of just showing them the rent versus own, where their money's going every month, I also show them what it's going to cost them net worth wise if they decided to wait and not buy. So here's the TCA and all I do in here is I go put two options. I do same every single time. One, just super basic, either 5% down conventional or FHA. And then the second option is always down payment assistance. So if they don't have a lot of money, a lot of renters don't have much money saved. Down payment assistance is an option they'll likely look at. So I show them with just a typical loan and down payment assistance versus them renting what their net worth is going to look like. So now they're not only seeing the rent versus own and seeing where their monthly housing expense is going. Now they're getting to see what their actual net worth their financial life is going to look like. And this is one of the things that's the most game changing for me with renters because now they're seeing they're not stuck on this hamster wheel anymore of paying rent forever and getting nowhere and their savings staying where it's at and having a hard time saving because a lot of those people are maxed out already. Now I'm showing them just by buying a house and taking the same amount of money you're already spending every month and putting that towards your own house instead of towards rent, how game changing it is for your, finance, your finances and your financial life. And this scenario here, $123,000 net worth after five years for somebody that's renting and has $5,000 saved if they're lucky. That's like mind blowingly game changing for them. Now you, you mentioned rent versus own, but this is just two options. And do you ever yeah. use the actual rent versus own where it shows rent in column yeah. one? And yeah, so I, I send them both. I'll send them two links. One's the rent versus own. So they can see okay. just monthly what that looks like. Got and then it, this shows that it. net worth, what it looks like. The combination Got of those it. two does amazing for renters. Would you mind adding that to my homework assignment? If you could, for this, you know, customer at that price point, send yeah. the rent versus own so everyone can kind of see, you know, what you do. And also, if you don't yeah. mind, I don't know how I would exactly share this with the audience, but I would love to see how you deliver that in an email. And, you know, you can obviously, you know, okay. don't send me customer information. Uh, so, you know, create like a generic one, but I would like to so see. I actually, have a, I actually have a template for it and I don't make these specific to the person 99% of the time. I just use the templated ones I have and just send it to them just so they can see an example of what it looks like. I don't even have to make it specific to them for it to work. Oh, so and by the way, are you using strategy templates? In, in oh yeah, for everything. For that? Yeah, basically any, any advice I ever give, I try to put into a strategy template. If I give the same advice twice, it has to go on a strategy template. Well, I, guys, I'm not going to be able to demo that right now because it would show client information if you showed me that screen. So I'm not going to ask him to show me that screen, but I do want, if you're, if you're a mortgage coach and you're not doing strategy templates, you have to start doing strategy templates. And you can either go to our online training. Actually, you can stop sharing the screen real quick and I'll, I'll just show real quick where you can get training since I know there's probably a lot of, a lot of new loan officers watching this. Um, let me show you how to go and get your questions answered on that. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen real quick. Uh, Ryan just confirmed that everybody is seeing it. And, yeah. you know, a, yep. cu a couple couple places, guys. So, you know, online 24-7 training, you know, this is beginner's training, you know, how to read a TCA, how to personalize it, you know, just making sure you know what everything is. I mean, real beginner stuff. And then, and then this includes templates, you know, how to create B templates. It will include strategy templates and product templates. Uh, so this is, call it, you know, mortgage 
coach training 2.0 and then advanced, you know, with, and, and these are all really short, quick, concise, how to, how to apply. A lot of people don't realize like you could have used one of our integrations like Optimal Blues, Simple Nexus, HomeBot, you know, it could have come from some other platform and already be a mortgage coach. And then you could just apply a strategy template to that. So like literally a lead, like this, this, this one we're going to see from uh, Grace later on, I have to imagine it's a pretty complex, you know, your max purchase price, uh, appraisal gap strategy, and a cost of waiting. That could be a strategy template. And you could come in through Simple Nexus or whatever point of sale that you use, and boom, you apply that strategy. So I just want to make sure you guys know about that as new loan officers. And then also um, two other resources for everyone. Every single day of the week, we do live training. Um, if you're an enterprise partner like Guild is, they've got a designated success manager that does training beyond this. But every mortgage coach client, uh, we do beginner's training. So if you're white belt on Mondays, every Tuesday, I'm interviewing amazing people. Every um, Wednesday at 11, strategy training. So it's a group setting. If you want to learn some type of the strategy, just go sign up for that date. Every Thursday, it's just Q&A. And that can be strategies. It's group coaching. So everybody gets their questions answered. And then every Friday, um, it's a mastermind. Uh, one last thing, make sure you guys know about our top producer insights. These are some best practices. In fact, you'll see a couple of guild loan officers here. Shayla Gifford teaches a cost of waiting. Uh, Amber Kovark teaches an appraisal gap strategy. Uh, so make sure you guys know about those resources. The one really cool thing about this particular resource is not only do you have a loan officer video, you actually have a link. So you can actually get a TCA, a sample TCA from one of the country's best loan officers. This is a, a RIP versus nice. by by Denise uh, Donahue, the mortgage nerd. So Ryan, let's switch gears and wrap up around mentoring new loan officers. Uh, okay. So one, you just saw some training resources, but if you could just give your playbook for mentoring and training new loan officers to turn them into advisors, what would be some high level uh, playbook advice you'd have for folks? Uh, very first thing, just have an actual plan and have a process. So you're not spending your whole day just reactively chasing your tail, trying to figure out how to get things done. Just simply having a plan and a process, which starts with just sitting down in the morning and putting some things on your calendar. It doesn't have to be complex. Just put some things on your calendar just so they're not in your head now. And you have some structure your day. Start with the plan and a process. After you do that, it's going to give you a lot more time to be better on the calls you're already on. It's going to give you more time to be a good business partner to real estate agents and share advice with them like you're learning on here. Just start with a plan and a process. When you're brand new, everything's on you. And if you're not coming in with a plan and a process for how you do things and staying in control of your business, you're just going to chase your tail forever. And you're going to plateau eventually and never pass that. Until you have a plan and a process, you can start to be a better advisor, continue to learn, figure out how to use different tools to leverage your time and convert more and be a better business partner. But for me, it starts with that. And if you don't know what that needs to look like, ask any loan officer around you through this community. There's so many loan officers you can ask for what they do to plan their day, what their processes are like. And then after that, just keep it simple. I think we way overcomplicate things. Just keep it simple. What do you do first thing in the morning? What do you do on Mondays? What do you do on Tuesdays? What do you do on Wednesdays? Just keep it simple and just repeat it. What about um, learning to use mortgage coach? You know, when should they start using mortgage coach and any, it might be the same advice whether they're new or not, but if it was a new loan yeah. officer, any advice on when they should start learning and how they should start learning? Uh, so brand new loan officer is 100% right out the gate. Uh, I have a loan officer I hired four months ago, and the very first thing I had him do was start creating mortgage coach TCAs around scenarios that we had. So applications we had, pre-approvals that we had. So he could start to get familiar with loan structures, what they looked like what the advice we give looks like. So immediately, just because it helps you visualize what you're doing, you're working with loans for a living, you're giving advice around loans, start building the TCAs right away, just so you can visually see what that looks like. And for me, as I've developed my own advice and experience, I use Mortgage Coach to test my own advice. If I think something might be a good idea, I'll go create a TCA around it and see if I'm right. 
And a lot of the time I'm not right, or I'll be like 60% right. But through doing the TCA, I get to test my own advice and see what it looks like. And now I can go give even better advice and then show that to somebody visually. So, so you heard it guys. And I, I couldn't agree more. I do want to remind folks that we have a new loan officer playbook. This will be added to our website any day now, actually, um, by next week. But right now it's in LinkedIn. I put a link down below for it. I've given you guys a lot of resources. Uh, but but we, we go through in detail. Uh, I did this playbook with Todd Bookspan for Win by Noon. So a lot of the things that Ryan just said is exactly what Todd said, only he's recommending that you use the Win by Noon planner. You can check that out at winbynoon.com. Uh, but, you know, start creating TCAs immediately. Have you ever seen this playbook or read this playbook by any chance? No, not until you mentioned it uh, when we were on the phone the other day. I want to go check it out and look at it. Tell me what you think about these two scripts and, uh, and really give me feedback. One of the things I'm recommending is that new loan officers, you know, call all your friends that are renters and, mm -hmm. and just use this script. You know, you call someone, you know, they rent, you just say, hey, I need your help. I'm a new loan officer and I need to practice my rent versus own analysis. Do you mind if I practice on you? I just got a couple of questions, I'm not gonna tell you anything. I just need to practice. And then call all your homeowner friends. Same thing, I'm new in the business, need your help. I just need to practice my move up analysis. Not trying to sell you a refi, I just need to practice. Now remember, these are people that know you, they like you, they care about you, and you're just asking them to practice. What do you think of that idea? I think those two scripts for new loan officers is amazing. We definitely don't leverage the people we already know enough. Uh, that actually reminds me of a tip that I give new loan officers related to agents. Call people you already know and ask them what real estate agents they know or have used. It's a really easy, Ooh. warm connection to a real estate agent. Just call people you already know. Like, hey, who's a real estate agent you know that you could connect me with? Now you have a warm connection with a brand new agent. You're not going out cold calling real estate agents anymore. Well, Ryan, you you are a gift to the mortgage cards community. Um, you know, leaders like you are a gift to the industry. Uh, thank you for leading by example at Guild. You've done a lot of good work to help us grow that relationship and help them deliver better advice to families. As we wrap this up, any any you know closing advice that you want to give or any final thoughts you want, knowing that you're communicating with thousands of loan officers right now. Yeah, absolutely. So there's two things that are the foundation for what I tell my team for working with clients and with agents. Genuinely care about the person that you're talking to, whether it's an agent that you're trying to help earn a paycheck, build a business, build a life for themselves, or a client that's buying their first house or their 20th house. It doesn't matter. The more you genuinely care about the person you're helping, the better advice you're going to give, the better customer service you're going to, you're going to give them, the more you're going to enjoy your job and not feel like you're battling things all day long like we can. I genuinely care about the people you're talking to and it'll totally change your life in this business. Yeah, great, great call, great interview. I, I noticed you've got quite a few books behind you. I am just curious yeah. if, if I had to ask you one book that you know could have been a book you read a long time ago, could have been a book you've read in the past year. What is a favorite book that you've read that's had impact for you? Uh, the book I recommend to people the most is actually Mindset by Carol Dweck. It just helps you change your mindset from being in a, a fix, like everything's the way it is and there's nothing you can do about it. Mindset to a growth mindset and understanding that everything changes always, whether you like it or not. So you might as well learn how to use that to your advantage. It just helps you see the world differently. Uh, the two books I just finished reading that I redid lots of my business life, personal life after reading was uh, Essentialism and Effortless. They're both by the same author. Those two books, here you can see how many markers I have in there for things to go back and wow. reference afterwards. Actually, um, I, I, uh, I, I had heard about essentialism. I hadn't heard about effortless. It sounds like effortless I, is, is his follow up to it. So essentialism is like just get rid of all the weeds in your life, basically. And effortless is how yeah. to do that effortlessly. Oh, I like that. Can you really get rid of all the weeds in your life effortlessly? Uh, <laughs> all right. His approach to it is so much different than any, any I've ever seen. That's why I have so many yeah. tags in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that one myself. So, hey, man, you've been awesome. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate yeah, you. Thanks, man. For, for anyone listening to this, if you don't already subscribe to our YouTube channel, go subscribe right now. Uh, we're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers this year. We're a little over 16,000. Uh, we are dedicated at Mortgage Coach to helping you be a more successful mortgage professional. 
And the way we want to do that is by helping you make families more successful homeowners and helping make realtors more successful real estate agents. So if you align with those values, make sure you follow us. Uh, make sure you're active in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group. Anybody that's watching this uh, in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group, if you have questions for future interviews, let me know. If you have people that you want me to interview, let me know. And then one last reminder, we are doing Palooza on the 8th. It's I think it's the second Tuesday in March next week. Uh, we're going to have Shayla Giffers yes. on that stage. Uh, we're going to have 11 other amazing mortgage professionals. They'll each have about 10 minutes to jump on stage and share a script that they think loan officers need to know. And then given how much rate shopping there is in today's market, I'll probably be asking everybody, you know, what, what do you say to rate shoppers? Like, what is your tactic and strategy? So sign up for Scriptapalooza. Ryan, have an awesome day, brother. Take care, everyone. This is Thanks, a wrap. See everybody.